Good morning, Tobias. Good morning, Steph. Today I want to talk to you about something important because the coming days are going to be kind of tough for those who cannot understand the lay of the land. And so they're going to have to come to understand that there is no longer going to be a option that will say you can delay the upcoming onslaught of dark energy that will come to the land because it will overrun your defenses. There's just no hope anymore of trying to escape from the ones who will rape and pillage and destroy your community, even if you try to rise above the rising sea, unless you can turn to God. If you can't turn to God, all your efforts will be for naught. Okay, Tobias, a question here. When you talk to people, who are you talking to? I see there's a developing, well, there's a tropical storm, developing hurricane, heading for the Windward Islands, so into the Caribbean. It's going to be rough, um, two of them, actually. And Mexico's getting hit again. Uh, with rains and torrential uh, storms. So who are you talking to? Because you say in the next days, what do you mean? Can you be a little more specific? Dateline for destruction is the dateline app because you have joined forces with the ones who will go with you into a new community that will be protected by God energy. However, those who do not have the ability to trust on God, you see, are going to have to flee the rising seas. When we talk about the rising seas, of course, we're not just talking about the rising level of the oceans. We're talking about the floods, and we're talking about the droughts, and we're talking about the seismic disruptions that are coming. And so there's going to be generally a lot of upheaval. So when you hear the term rising sea from us, it means that there is going to be a lot of destructive energy unleashed on the earth in many different ways. And that includes the incursion of migrants into various areas that are going to try to escape from the rising seas and the droughts and the floods, and the lack of food, etc., and eventually from the seismic activity. And so what I want from you is to understand that this is a worldwide issue. It is a worldwide issue. And if it doesn't come today for you, it will come. Nevertheless, I am not speaking to you specifically, Steph. I am talking to the people listening to this. If it doesn't come for you today, it doesn't mean it isn't going to come for you. Remember that before World War II began, they took after certain groups of people. There was 
a mounting tension as they began to rip through the surrounding area and pick up anyone in their garbage compactor that was not to their liking. It was happening not only in Europe, but in China and the Philippines, etc. as the conflagration grew. Now, what I want you to understand, Stephanie, is that it is time to play your hand. And we talked about your hand the other day, how replete it is with the story of humanity. This is not a joke. Your hand actually is so propitious that it would be superstitious <laughs> if people were inclined that way. And they would say, oh my God, she must be a witch. But, of course, they have to switch on the light switch because they have to switch on the light switch because they are so behind the trust on being free of anxiety because they have to live in the dark that they don't understand that when you align with God energy, God energy aligns with you. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. That the forces of nature, which include, you might say, the forces of God's nature, are that it will work with you if you work with it. It will work with you if you work with it. Do you understand this? And so, for you, of course, it was important to you that you were able to see through the facade of the agency of darkness. The agency of darkness is like saying that there is a cloud of ignorance and arrogance that descends on the world. And some people are so determined to get above it that they will climb as high as they can to get above that cloud of arrogance and ignorance. And they do, because once you get above the clouds, then you can see it from the other side. So you simply see it from the other side. And so one way or another, people get the opportunity to see it from the other side and they're never the same. But they can't explain it to the people that are still under the cloud of ignorance and arrogance because that cloud is so thick, you see. And so as you continue to rise in your energy, you will eventually be able to see a different point of view. So the more people that can rise above the cloud of ignorance and arrogance, that is, who can drop their ego and begin to live in peace with themselves, with their world, and with God energy, the more that humanity will brighten the world. Because it is the dark energy that is exuded with every breath by those who are occluded by this dark cloud that continues to keep it shrouding the earth. And that is why we always say that from here, we can only see the areas where the cloud has lifted and there is a bright light. And although some people claim to have this insight, very, very, very few do. Very few do. Because most just mimic the words of the prophets, you might say, and say, hey, I'm smart today, because that is the nature of ignorance and our arrogance, that they think they know it all.
This is something that is a little difficult to explain to those who are occluded by the dark and also those who are in the light. Because when you're in the light, you just don't care anymore. You just don't care anymore how others wear their hair and you say, well, that's the way they play. I don't have to play that way. If I can't find anybody to play with in the light, I'll just play by myself because I can stay by myself and be quite happy because I already know that I'm connected to the natural world and I'm connected to the to God energy. And so I always have a companion, you see, because God is always with me. And so they're not concerned as much about the people who are shrouded by the darkness below. Now I'm using above and below, you know, in a metaphorical sense, so that it will be easier for people to understand it. But it's not a literal sense. And that's why a lot of people get so confused, because they cannot understand the metaphorical nature of the world they live in. They honestly get so confused that they will lose track of where they are, who they are, what they are, etc. Now, on to the next phase of this story. So, this story has been going on for a long time, of course, and we're all part of it. And in our soul family, we have a very, very strong tendency to want to help humanity because of our history. However, the only way that we can help humanity at this point is to point the way for them to not delay in the way they play. Because if they try to delay they won't be in the right place at the right time. They just won't. They will be inundated by the rising sea, whether it is the water, the starvation, the lack of water, or the violence from their neighbors, you see. And so there's a lot of violence going on around the earth right now because it was time, you see. It was time. So, the people who are given to violence will be violent. They will be violent. Make no mistake about this. The people that are given to violence will be violent. And therefore, it behooves those who are smart enough to understand that if they would not be part of the chaos of the nations, that will try to get more rations by attacking each other, they need to find a place of safety where God will protect them. But God will not protect them if they do not turn to God. God cannot protect them if they do not turn to God because God can only give back what they give to him. So if they say God is dead or there is no God or God is the one that's in the bottle, up on the shelf, in the church, then they have turned their back on God. And so God can't do anything because they have turned their back on God. And they can't hear to God. They can't see God. They can't listen to God. They are blind to anything but their shadows, you see, because God is the light. So if you're blind to anything but your shadows, then that's okay because you will be swallowed in the rising sea. And what's the problem? What's the problem? Is there anybody who has turned their back to God that doesn't think they're going to die? And so if you die, what's the problem? What's the problem? You got your wish, because you wish for death over and over and over again, when you would say, God is dead. If God is dead, then you are dead, because you see, you and God are eternally linked, and what you see is what will be. What you see is what will be. So those who have come to understand the nature of God, that God is the 
good father, you might say, who exists as a part of you. You can't get rid of God any more than you can get rid of the DNA that comes to you from your father. You are part of God. Your father is part of you. At the same time, God is the totality of all that is. So we talked many times about how this works. God is God. God is love. And God is divided into the lover and the beloved. And the lover and the beloved have a synchronistic point of view, one to the other. So it is a trinity, God, you, and the other, which is the same as saying reality. And now, for you and me, there is a tremendous energy of change because the time has come for humanity to evolve. The time has come for humanity to evolve. Those who do not feel the energy of evolution will remain behind. They will remain behind. That's all there is that you can say about it. God has it in hand, and God says, You have turned back to me. You love me. I love you. I am your good father, you see. I am not going to abandon you. I am not going to allow you to be swallowed in the rising sea because you and I are a family, you see. We are the family of reality. Now, what is coming to the world is the turning of the screw because the screw has to turn in order to screw everything back together again because it got really loose, you see. It got really loose and it got so loose that it unscrewed the trust on God from humanity. And this didn't happen instantly, of course. It has been going on through the history of humanity, that humanity has continued to trust on a false reality. They've continued to trust that they were orphans, you see, and that they were born from their DNA and not from the will of God, you see. And so they continue to trust on spontaneous generation and spontaneous death because that's all they know. That's all they know is what they've been trained to trust upon. And even when they go to heaven and get a different point of view, they come back and the same into the same stew, and they are retrained to trust on spontaneous generation and spontaneous death. And even those who think that they trust on God do not trust on God. We've been through that. They catch the wind in a bottle and trust on the bottle. That somehow there's something in there. And they can't see it, but it must be God, because they captured the wind in the bottle. And they don't understand the wind. They don't understand God. They don't understand what makes the earth spin. They don't understand the profundity of God energy. So let us talk some more about your role in all of this, okay? Okay. So you already know that your role is to carry the destiny of humanity in your hand, which is a way of saying that you have the winning hand in your hand. You have the cards that need to be played. And you've been playing them very carefully throughout your life. In fact, throughout many lifetimes, you've been playing them very carefully. And so the lines on your hand are just another one of the synchronicities of life, you see, that like astrology and other forms of what people used to think of as divination are actually the manifestations of the story so that the story can be read 
in different ways. People think that stories can only be read in the human language. You see the marks that appear on a paper. Here I can read the story because of the marks right on, on this paper that somehow got here through the auspices of God energy because everyone's filled with God energy. So those who are inspired to write a story, those who publish the book, are all inspired through the auspices of God energy. You see, because they hear a little voice that says, why don't you write a story? How about this? How about that? And they follow through. And they trust that it's all coming from them. But of course it's not, because we're all connected, you see, in the energy of the totality of the universe, you see. So it all works together. It's just that you can either accept it or deny it. And if you deny it, then you can't function very well in a community because you deny your part of it. You are basically an ego, which is the term that means that you are ignorant and arrogant and think that you are the God of the universe because you got God in a bottle on a shelf or you don't understand the nature of the wind that it will blow and it will go away and it will come again and it does that perpetually now the nature of the markings on your hand or anybody's hand are like the words in the book they appear there in order to help those who can read the energy in the hands or the energy in the stars to understand the connection of all things. All things are connected. And the people who think God is dead will not understand this. The people who trust on spontaneous generation will not understand this. They are spontaneously generated at earth birth in some mysterious way that they don't even think about because if they thought about it, then they'd have to have a trust on God and they don't want to have a trust on God because they've been told that God is dead and they have to trust that they are zombies, you see. And so most of the world is occupied by zombies who don't understand the interconnectedness of everything, you see. And you're learning this in your discussions with Thomas about the forces that are at play on Earth today that even the scientists cannot quite grasp the interconnectedness of everything. They are still playing with a mechanical universe that's kind of like a mechanical watch. And if we move this spring, then this will do open and this will happen and that will happen. And of course, all the springs and screw and wheels in the watch as of yore before the digital age are connected. And even in the digital age, they're connected in a very, very, profound way. And they would say, well, if I move this or I move this, this is going to happen. It's all going to work in perfect order. All I have to do is change this a little bit and move this. But you multiply that by so many times that it's unimaginable to them to understand how the forces in the universe work together to yield the reality that it does. So they can't possibly know what will happen if they move this lever or this screw. They cannot understand it. And so all their efforts to slow global warming or to delay the inevitable will go astray. It won't work. And it may even cause it to come faster for them and more virulent in its appearance. And so that is the world you know, right? It is the world I know, Tobias. I mean, you describe it in your own way, but I can understand it because that's the world I know. And so it is time to play your hand. And so we want you to play your cards, you see, because we're here with you to help you play your cards. And so. 
This is the time that you knew was coming and you've been <laughs> just letting the water flow, you might say, because you did know that eventually you would have to step up and say, hey, it's time to announce my candidacy for president of the new nation under God. And this means that you have to vote for the new nation under God. We're going to use the term under God because we trust on God, you see. We trust that God is a reality. We don't trust on religion. We don't trust on those people who are so materialistic that they can't see above the clouds because they think that they are smart, but they're just arrogant and ignorant. Because they don't trust on God, you see. If you don't trust on God, you are missing so much of your brain, you might say, and that you can't figure out what you're missing. And that's okay. That's okay. Because everything works out okay. You can't uncouple yourself from God. But you can turn your back on God. Again, let's repeat that. You cannot... Uh, gobble yourself from God, but you can turn your back on God, and that means you have a backwards point of view. You have a backwards point of view, and you're just looking at your shadow. Now, this is an important part to say, because a lot of you have been trained to understand that what you see around you is your mirror. It is a mirror for you. It just mirrors back to you the reality inside of you. So, when you turn your back on God, you see your shadow. And your shadow is your mirror. Your shadow is your mirror. It just mirrors back to you what's inside of you. You see? Do you understand this? From a different point of view, it is a mirror. It's not just a shadow, it's a mirror. Because it mirrors what you do and what you say. When you turn back to the light, when you turn back to God, you are not facing your shadow. You are facing the light. And in the light, you will delight because you're not just looking at, at a mirror and seeing yourself, you see. You are seeing the creative possibilities. You are seeing the options that appear before you. And you are seeing the source of comfort, the source of hope, the source of love, the source of life. And because you're facing the source, then the source can talk to you. And you can drink the clear waters that come to you. You are not turned away from the light, and you are not just looking at your shadow or facing the mirror that reflects back to you what you put in it, you see. Now, I'm not saying that God won't give back to you what you give to God, because many could perceive of that as a mirror. I give to God some money when I give it to this poor guy, and so God's going to have to give me the money back. That is not the way it works when you face God. When you face God, what you give will come back to you because you give to God the energy that will come back to you. And so the only difference is that when you face away from God, you are giving to your shadow or to the mirror what will come back to you. And so if you frown in the mirror, the mirror is going to frown back at you. But when you turn to the light and you delight, in the light, because you see all the magic or potential in the light, you don't give a frown, you see. You don't look at reality and say, well, that person is going to hurt me. Because I'm going to hurt them, you see. 
because that's your mirror. That's your mirror. You're going to hurt them. They're going to hurt you. And you get afraid because you don't understand that what you give is what you receive. You do not understand what is happening when you're facing your shadows because the light is dim, you see. And in the dimness of the light, you can't see that which gives you fright. You think it is a monster, you see. And so you're afraid of it. When you face the light, you don't see the shadows. You just see the light. And you say the light is bright. And you say, I think it makes me smile because I see all the beautiful things all around me. It's like looking at all the little butterflies flitting around you and saying, wow, they're beautiful. Wow, they are beautiful. When you look at the world, you see it in a different light. And you say, wow, it's beautiful. Wow, it's beautiful. Because you're not looking at your shadows, you see. So the difference is that when you look at the light, you look at what God gives you. And you give back to God what God gives you. Because he sees it reflected in your eyes. He gives you a beautiful day and you say, wow, what a beautiful day. And God says, yes, that's what I gave you. Now let me give you another beautiful day. Because this is the way we play when you reconnect with God. You see, you give to God what you see and hear and think. And God gives it back to you in a shower of delight. But when you face away from God, then you are looking only at the shadows. You're looking only in the mirror of your own fear. And when you turn back to God, God gives to you another point of view. And you say, hey, that's pretty nice, God. Thank you. And God says, thank you, my dear. And so you're not just playing with your shadows, you see. You're playing with the source of your life, creativity, and believability. You are not no longer arrogant and ignorant because you have become restored to your capacity for genuine companionship. For genuine love of the world you see. And God will continue to give you a present every day. It is always the present that appears before your eyes. And you say, thank you for my present today. And God says, you're welcome, dear. But when you face away from God, you only see the reflection of your own original sin. Because your original sin, you see, is the only one you ever did. It was the choice to turn away from God. And those who convince you that you were born in original sin are committing the original sin. Because they're telling you that you are forced to Turn away from God. And so they try to fool you because they see themselves in their shadows, you see. And they say things like, hey, if someone tells you there is no devil, then that's the devil trying to trick you because they are the devil. They are the devil trying to trick you. Do you understand this? They will always give back to you what they see in themselves, you see. And if they see the devil in themselves, because they're looking at their shadow and they see the devil out there, then that's what they will give to you. All you have to do is turn around and face the source of the light and say, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. Wow. Look at this world. It is beautiful. And God will say, thank you, dear. Let me help you to have another beautiful day. And that is what is happening to the earth. Because all those who are facing the shadows, who tried to capture the wind in a bottle and worship it, you see, are worshiping the darkness. And the darkness will swallow them. Because that's what they worship. 
But those who have turned to the light and said, well, I'm fine now because I'm not afraid anymore because I see everything in the light. And God says, well, you are absolved of original sin because the only sin you ever committed, that is your only true mistake, because sin means mistake, your only true mistake is that you turned away from me. And now you've turned back to me. And so it's as simple as if you did a mathematical problem and you made a mistake and it didn't come out right. And you went back and looked at it and found your mistake and corrected your mistake. And now it all comes out the right way. Now it all works together, you see. And the reason things don't work together for the people that have turned away from God, you see, is because of that original mistake. That they can say God is dead and not trust on God. They are spontaneously created at birth and will spontaneously leave at death. Or that they think that they have God in their bottle and they can put it on a shelf and worship it and force others to worship it. And if others don't worship it, they'll kill them, you say, or torture them or excommunicate them or whatever. Because the, they are worshiping nothing at all. But that means they are nothing at all. Because they see their own reflection, you see. They see that they are captured in a bottle. And disappeared. Because when you're captured in a bottle, you disappear if you're the wind. And the reality is that God made his children, much like himself, so that they would blow in a gentle way and help each other to stay connected to reality. So those who turn to God, you see, have turned away from the trust on their shadows. Now, this is enough for today, or at least for the moment. We'll pick it up later. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Tobias.